calculated concerning this convention. He thought it was going to be like previous years when the major moves will be starting by Wednesday, Thursday. But this year, God started on day one. Amen. And I see what the Lord is doing this first three days and also this convention pictured in Isaiah 40 verse 3 the voice of him that cried in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make straight in the desert a highway for our God that's what God is doing with the kind of words that God is speaking and the kinds of calls that he's making. It says in verse 4, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now you see this particular verse is not actually a prayer. Neither is it a blessing. He is saying what needs to be done for the glory to appear. The glory does not just show up. Otherwise, we will be confused. Because what people call the glory in many cases is glamour and they are not the same if the glory is going to come it is expensive it's going to cost you a lot walking in the supernatural walking with god is the most expensive experience for a human being it's going to cost you many things that a lot of people are unwilling to pay and so when i hear the calls that the lord is making in the convention it tells me the kind of place that God is taking you. The kind of plans that he has in view for you. When my servant mommy got engaged and the Lord drummed it in her ears, keep yourself pure. Keep your vessels for me because of what I want to build on your lives together. Now, today we can look at what God is doing. And thank God that um, he gave us grace. We met as virgins and we married as virgins. Praise God. <laughs> and you know, the beauty of it is this. That in this church today, we have found that 90% at least of brothers and sisters marrying are virgins. And one of the beautiful things is the fact, is the testimony that the brothers say when they find their wives virgins and say, one said, ah, I can't describe the joy in my heart. I can trust her with my life. You know? And um, 
I remember a young man came to see me from another state. He's not a member of the church. He hears me on radio and TV. And he said, I need to see you. He's married. And his heart is broken because himself and his fiancée, they, he decided to keep himself for the sake of the marriage. And they agreed together only to find out that the fiancé was going behind, the lady was going behind to sexually defile herself. So now that he found out, he said, I feel like going out to retaliate. I said, two wrongs will make a right. You know? He feels so cheated. He said, I can't trust her anymore. How could she say she loves me and we agree together and she did that? Amen. And I'm so happy. I'll never forget one day we were going to one of our villages for missionary work. And I was going with mommy and um, another of the sisters in the ministry that time. And we took a vehicle from Ife. The mission post was on the way to Oyo. And there was this elderly man and his friend that were driving their, the private car, but they were using it for Kabu Kabu. So they carried us from the campus gate at Ife. And they got to talking, and the man, the two men, they, get, they were talking. They knew that these two ladies at the back, they are undergraduates. So they just got to talking and said, look, there's no, there's, no, there's no pure girl anymore. They are just all useless. They kept talking and said, you can't find anyone, even at 13 and things like that, and all that. And then they kept looking at the back. And then I think one of them either asked them or something like that. And the two ladies said, excuse me, sir. We are virgins. The man said, <laughs> You don't mean it. He said, we are Christians. We are children of God. So it became a platform to preach the gospel to the men. But they, were, they, they had a witness that it is still possible. See, God is looking for some vessel that he will use to tell people that it is still possible. Calling is possible. Chastity is possible. Faith is possible. Whatever is in the Bible is possible. Despite what people are saying. May you qualify to be one of such. Yeah. And tonight, I want to speak on a subject very simple. It's going to be one of my shortest messages in this convention. Amen. And I mean that. <laughs> Even though quite a number of you have unbelieving minds on that point. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to be speaking on the test of God. Amen. The test of God. Every man must be tested before the glory comes. God does not use the innocent. I want you to write it down. God does not use the innocent. God does not commit to innocence. God uses the tested. God commits the precious things of his kingdom to the tested. Now, when I was speaking the other time, those of you that you had made mistakes before you knew the truth or you knew the Lord, from the day that you knew the truth, you are responsible to live up to the truth. Are you following what I'm saying? Because lots of times people, some people, I remember one of the ladies in the church, 
came to mommy and she was crying. Say, mommy, I wish I had heard this message before I messed up my life. It does not matter where, when you hear the truth. From that point, God begins to judge you. The Bible says the times of your ignorance, God winked at it. But now you come under the command of God. So from that point that you hear the truth, don't condemn yourself. Hold yourself accountable. Did you get what I'm saying? That from this day that you have made this vow of chastity till I meet Jesus, even though I may not have the physical emblem of virginity again, I will carry the glory of virginity into marriage. You can carry the glory of it in the spirit. Is that okay? And the same thing will still happen for you as somebody that still has the physical evidence. Praise God. And that is one of the reasons why this message is important today. The first man that God placed on the earth failed the test of God. And all of us are where we are today. Amen? There are three tests that will come. The test of God, the test of the devil, and the test of man. You must pass the three. Now I want to take my text from 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 11. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. It says, according to the glorious gospel. This gospel is glorious. There's a glory in it. That the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I want you to look at the framing of that verse. What he's saying is this, that it's not the gospel alone that you hear, but something in the gospel, something that comes with the gospel is at stake. And before you qualify, you must pass the test. That is why it is possible for two people to do the same Christian act and not obtain the same result. There is a glory in the gospel, there is a power in the gospel that not everybody can be trusted with it. Are you listening to me? When mommy was ministering the first time and she came under that anointing that I see somebody that your name will be on a label. I knew that was from the Lord. And then people came forward. And the Lord began to show me as people were coming forward. If they only know that that thing that I said is available but they must qualify for it they will ask for what is the process to qualify for it do you get what i'm saying one man of god shared a testimony many years ago of a lady that was praying and fasting god use me god use me and cried and fasted and prayed and she never got an answer until one day they were in a convention like this and during the morning session or afternoon session she was very heavily pressed to go to the toilet and so she rushed to the toilet and by the time she got to the toilet the toilet had had many visitors it was in a very bad shape all kind of things excreta, urine splattered around the toilet bowl and things like that and as pressed as he was, he moved back and ran back. And then the voice of the Lord came and said, My daughter, why couldn't you use, use that toilet? He said, ah, It's dirty, I can't use it. 
He said, that's why I can't use you. In prayer, she has bombarded heaven with a lot of prayer. She was praying. Say, are you not praised? Lord, say, are you not praised? Say, I praise, but I can't use it. As much as God is looking for vessels to use and put his glory on, not every vessel qualifies. And it's my prayer that you qualify yourself. Because like that Isaiah 40 says, it's not talking of the mountain shall be brought low. Really, in the literal prophetic language of what this man of God was speaking, he's saying that the things that are mountainous in our lives, one of which is pride, anything in your life that makes you feel pompous must be brought low before the glory of God can come. The valleys shall be exalted. Those areas of depression in your life, those areas that have a shortage, areas that you have inferiority complex, God will feel it. He said the crooked shall be made straight. It's amazing to find born again people who still have crookedness in their lives. And God said it has to be made straight before my glory can come. So the first thing that God does is begins to prepare the way. He says, prepare a highway for the Lord. And how many of you know that in every society, one of the means of, um, one, one of the most important aspects of society is transportation. All right? And the transportation is determined by the um, How do I call it now? It's determined by the road that is available. Let me use that. I saw four rides, a bicycle, a motorcycle, a vehicle, a plane. Now you know that you can't ride a bicycle in the atmosphere. But you know you can ride a bicycle on some footpaths. You can walk on some footpaths. If you want to go from here to Lagos, you can go on foot, but it takes you a long time. Okay? And as the roads get better prepared, the transportation method gets better too. And when you have a highway, you can get there faster. So God is talking of a highway in our lives. Are you following what I'm saying? So that scripture is not just a scripture to claim on Sunday, even though we can claim it. Do you get what I'm saying? The mountains that he's talking about, there is not a mountain of problems. It's a mountain of ego. It's a mountain of things in your life that make you feel superior. Maybe your color. Maybe something that God had blessed you with. Maybe a gift in you that makes you high. Uh, comes up and say it must be brought low. And then the valleys must be exalted. The crooked must be made straight. And the rough made smooth. I pray that smoothness will enter the life of everybody. Amen. Amen. And rough things in our life will be smoothing out. And then it says, and the glory of God shall come. So God is dealing with that first in this convention. Amen. So God does not use the innocent. Did you get what I'm saying? He uses the tested. And when we talk about the tested, according to this scripture, it is the tested that qualifies to be trusted. Paul discovers something in this verse. That the power of the gospel is committed, is a commitment. Do you know, you know, when you use the word commitment, you are using it to, to deal with something that is precious. You don't just carry your little baby, even in this convention, and you are, you are in a hurry, and you just hand over your baby to a stranger and say, hey, mama, one more, please, hey, look up, and you rush somewhere. You don't do that to your baby. Do you get what I'm saying? You might take one of the chairs in the church and do that, but not your baby, no matter how much of a hurry you are in, you will look for somebody that you know that you can trust. Ah, sister, can you please help me look after this baby. You commit that baby to that sister. 
And you expected that sister to take care of that baby. So there's something that God is so precious to God is glory. That is not something that it drops like oranges. It will test us. Amen. Paul passed the test. And he said, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I tell leaders that don't seek to become a leader of men. Seek to become followable. God does not gather a following for a man. You can gather a following for yourself. You can be a human relationship expert. There are many schools that are springing up today. Sometimes in our country, I lament at the poverty of integrity and the poverty of ideas. That when people, when they say, when people, when they say, there's a leadership summit, and they say the person to give the keynote address, the only qualification that that person has to give the keynote address is that he has a title. He does not have a life, actually. Are you following what I'm saying? So it doesn't help us to have models to pattern our lives after. So the young ones are just looking to get a title or a post as if that gives them a right. A post does not make you a leader. Are you followable? Is your life weighty enough for men to say we will follow you. Do you get what I'm saying? So I see three positions in relationship to the tests of God. One is the untested. The untested may be innocent, may not be so innocent, but it's untested. Young children largely are in that category. They're innocent, they're untested, they don't know much. Number two are those that have been tested and failed the test and have been rejected. The Bible used the word reprobate to describe them. Reprobate. In Jerusalem, there is a field called the field of blood, the potter's field, a seldama or so. That was the field that they used the money that Judas returned after betraying Jesus. That was what they used the money to buy. Are you following what I'm saying? And that field is a very peculiar field because... It is the field that they throw all the vessels that potters make that didn't make the great. Do you understand what I'm saying? When, they, when, when the, the potter is making this vessel and shaping it and doesn't make the great, it discards it. And they pack them in various conditions of brokenness and go and dump them in that field. You can't grow anything in that field. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't want you to end up on that kind of field in destiny. You will not end up there. Amen. There is such a field in the program of God that those that have been tested, they may not know when they are going through the test, but I'm praying that you will know. Amen. So you can prepare. And you pass your test. The third position is the position of the tested past and became the trusted. The one tested and who passed and became the trusted. May you become the trusted. Amen. May you be among the few human beings in your generation that heaven can trust. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? Okay? 
with the special things of the kingdom. I had one man of God say the first time that he attended the Billy Graham crusade. He said the message that he preached was so simple any average Bible study leader in his church could preach it. And he said simply, if you want to give your life to Christ, come. He said when that word come sounded and people of all Keda began to troop out, he fell on his face. Now God, whatever you do, this power in this simple word come, I want it. Recession is gradually becoming a global phenomenon and that is why God came ahead for his children to bring them kingdom wealth through a prophetic declaration by his servant, Reverend Ulushola Areo. At famine you shall laugh, at famine you shall laugh. In this collector's pack, you will learn reasons why people struggle financially, crossing the bridge of irreversible wealth, critical factors for prosperity, and the practical side of amassing wealth. Get your copies today at www.abundantlifehouse.org or any Dream Center branch nearest to you. You can also call any of these numbers 303 725 2124, 0909 001 3225, or 0908 484 0121. Don't be caught unawares by the trending economic situation. Learn God's way of will. At famine, you shall laugh. We've got an answer. Got a